This is the Awakening Word brought to you by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi, the president of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated and overseer of the Redemption Faith Churches. So when I say to you most time, nothing encourages a man like answers to prayer. It's an amazing truth. And I'm sure today you will experience answers to prayer. Reverend Ajitomobi is called by God with the mandate to reach the unreached at all cost and reawaken the church to our responsibilities. Every gallow the enemy have set up, by the word of God today, they will go into the same pits. Be blessed. God is all-knowing and he is the father of the whole earth. He made it. And one of the things that can give you an edge over other people is to hear what they didn't hear. Nothing ends life confusion like hearing from God. Nothing gives you settlement in your mind. Even when there are turbulence and crisis and war and all kinds of a thing, nothing gives you a settled mind like when you can hear from God. Hearing is inevitable to a believer's life. Revelation chapter 3 verse 22 is our takeoff guide today as we'll build on this issue of hearing. Because we're talking about how to hear from God. Then if your ears can hear, then you, God can be speaking and you will never hear. Shall we all read together Revelation chapter 3 verse 22? He that heard and hear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He so if you look at this story in chapter 3 of Revelation, from chapter 2, the Spirit of God began to speak to each of the churches. Assessing the churches, assessing their family, assessing the individual lives, and at the end of every assessment, it says, he that have and hear, let him hear. It speaks so clearly that the ears we're referring to here is not physical, natural ears. But you also know even the physical life that if you don't hear properly, when somebody is said to you, you will likely do a wrong thing. When you don't hear well, you make room for assumptions. I think this is what pastor was trying to say. If you don't hear well, you make room to increase your suspicion. What I thought I heard him said. And that was the way God confused the language of the earth in Genesis chapter 11. When he dip his hand in this pocket of languages and threw it to the men who were trying to build the tower. Everybody picked different language and if you are very quiet to observe, there are different words in different languages that means different things to different people. For example, when you say otami in Yoruba language, Ota means what? An enemy. When another language, Ota means what? My friend. So what God did was when, for example, God threw languages among those in the Tower of Babel, somebody picked a language that described Ota as an enemy, another body picked the same language that described or Tammy as friend. And that is the danger involved when you don't hear correctly. At times, you, somebody says something, you didn't hear it very properly, and you go and do something else. I don't know if you have had an instruction, bring so and so for me, and you brought the wrong thing. Anybody like that? It is not demonic attack. It's that you didn't hear well. That's why from today, you will hear well. So let he that have an ear hear. Let anyone who have an ear, the ear of the inner man, let him hear. Why? First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. That is the reason. 
But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that loved him. Think. Three things. Yes, eyes, understand it. Did you see that repeating itself? Eye has not seen. These natural eyes cannot see all that God has prepared for you. These natural ears cannot hear all that God has prepared for you. This natural heart cannot comprehend all that God has prepared for you. So God is saying to you here, the reason why you must have hearing ears from your spirit is that there are some provisions, there are some supplies that God has made available to you. But you can never assess them except God cause your ears to hear and God open your eyes to see. Hearing is therefore very critical for the need to comprehend the voice of God. Isaiah 30, 21. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, think about that. Nothing makes life journey very tough, very complicated, very difficult when you don't hear and you don't know which way to turn. And every day in life, we make decisions. So, it says you will hear a word behind thee in your ears. The word will come to your ears. You will hear it. And it will say to you, don't get confused. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. Think about it. You must be careful to hear from God before you make any major decisions. What will make you mighty will not be the nations you go to, will be the words you hear. You will hear a word behind you saying, you will hear a word behind you saying, go into Gary business, large scale, and you will hit fortune. You will hear a word saying, marry an Edoma girl, and before you know it, you are a king in Edoma land. You will hear a word speaking to you. Leave Zaria. Leave all the things you are doing here. Go to Ibadan. Go to Ojo. And this will happen. You will hear a word saying. You will hear a word saying. This is who to marry. You will hear a word saying. Your first child is a son. And this is the reason it's going to be a son. Or it's a girl. This is the reason it's going to be a girl. You will hear a word behind you saying. I am praying for you. From this moment. God will open your ears. You will hear the word of the Lord. You will not run life on guesses. It makes all the difference. Training your ears to hear the voice of God. Can I tell you one truth? Anything God asks you to do, God will defend it. But anything you choose to do by yourself, you have to defend it. So that's why at times you try to bring God into the thing God doesn't know anything about. He didn't tell you about it. I'm very confident that I will not be small in the city of Ibadan. You know why? When he spoke to me in Zaria, he says, go to Ibadan. So if Ibadan can help anybody, I'm one of the people Ibadan will help. So you must hear don't do what you think. Do what he says. Why? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not come to the heart of man. The things God has prepared for you. 
each life here there are divine provisions great preparation done by God but you can't assess it except you can hear you hear what behind you saying this is the way walk in it don't turn to the left don't turn to the right don't talk any other place just keep turning you see I keep showing you the word the ears the eyes the understanding your mind did you remember that look at again Matthew 13 verse 16 and 17 but bless are your eyes nobody said amen to that for they see and your ears for the hear. Verse 17. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Many who? Prophets. Many who? righteous. So the issue of hearing from God is not that, oh, because I'm righteous, I will automatically hear. No, you must train your ears to hear. I'm going to be telling you how to train your ears. Is that okay? But you must train your ears. You must train your eyes. If there's anything, I keep saying it, I've enjoyed that I can hear God. I can tell you that. Even in the midst of terrible crisis, I can hear God. That has saved me many times. And I'm sure it's going to save you. So blessed are your eyes for what they see. Blessed are your ears for what they will hear. Because you have access to the secrets of God. Can you repeat loud and clear to yourself? Bless are my eyes. Bless are my ears. For the things I will hear and the things I will see will change my life forever. Some ears cannot hear. Even when God is speaking continually, they just can't hear. It is called the tickling ears. Anybody whose ear is tickling can hear whatever God is saying. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own laws shall they heap to themselves teachers having what? Itching ears. What kind of ears? Itching ears. How does itching ears behave? Look at the next verse. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears. From where? From the truth. And shall turn unto what? Feebles. Give me this same verse 3 and 4 in message translation. You are going to find that there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teachings. Is it happening now? But we fill up on spiritual junk food, catchy opinions that tickle their fancies. Did you get that? Look at the next verse. They will turn their backs on truth and chase mirages. Tickling ear. You know what, how tickling ear operates? You become very selective what you hear. You got what I'm saying? You hear certain things that look very tough. It's, ah, that's too much for me. Even God knows that I cannot carry that one. Have you seen people that way? Selecting what they hear. Selecting what to obey. Selecting how they want to live. You can do that if your intention is to walk with God. Tickling ears are ears that cannot endure truth. They can endure rebook. They can take correction. No, they just want to do what they like to do. And then they believe 
anything they are doing, once it's convenient for them, that is it. That must be God. Tickling ears cannot hear the word of the Lord. Matthew 13 verse 15, another kind of ears that cannot hear. Even if God is speaking forever, they will never hear. For this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. What happened to the ears? Talk till tomorrow, they cannot understand what you are saying. Dull of hearing. And their eyes, they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. Three things has come up there again. What is it? Your ears, your eyes, your understanding, your mind. You see those three things repeating? Right? So hearing from God, those three things will be needed to be active. I never have heard stories like somebody said he's sleeping and he hears somebody call him in his dream and he hears and respond back. Have you heard such stories? It's true. So, and such hearing is not by natural calling. Whosoever called you might have stand on a spiritual altar somewhere. Is that okay? And call your name. And then you hear from inside your sleep you will be hearing your name and you see yourself responding. If what that person say is that as you hear, you die. As soon as that person hears, he would start struggling for breath and he would die. Do you understand the seriousness of this issue? Now there are different voices speaking to us. But I just want to overflow the need for you to train your ears. So the ears that cannot hear God's voice. What was number one kind of ear? Tickling ear. What the second type of ear? Dull ear. Have you had people who says, uh, what did you say? Have you had that kind of statement? You talk to somebody, he asks you back, what did you say? You say it again, says, what did you say? It didn't hear. The ear is dull to hear. That's very important. If you are going to be familiar with hearing the voice of God, you must not have a tickling ear. A tickling ear is that ear that is very selective to what to accept. Anything too difficult, he can't take it. He heap to himself teachers who tell him what he likes to hear. Are you hearing me? Teachers who tell him what he likes to hear. You rebook them, they pull away from you. All the ones continue clapping for them. So this is very important for us to note. So what must you do if you're going to, you, to start using your ears to hear spiritual things? What are the things you should do? Don't forget all that God supplies you are spiritually designed. Remember that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is that right? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Let us come to the mind of anybody the things God has provided for you. So there are provisions for you but you can see them. You can hear them with these natural ears. And for you to hear well what must you do? Number one, things to do. Train your ears with the word of God. You will hear a word behind you. And you have the word of God accessible to you. Train, speak the word to yourself. Speak to your ears by your words. Tell your ears in hearing you will hear. I pray this prayer for myself every day. Please, I do every day. Every day when I'm praying, I say, God, give me hearing ears. In hearing, let me hear. In seeing, let me see. And I've seen a lot of things that has changed my life. In perceiving, don't give me a mind that cannot pick things. It can pick signals. Things are just happening. No. 
So what must you do? Build a depth in the word and learn to surround your environment with the word of God. There's a way what is much in your mind. You can hear them come back to you. Let me explain what I mean by that. When you speak the word of God or you study the word of God so much, you are not, you are not studying again. You are just moving on your own way. You will start hearing those scriptures you study coming back to your ears. Who have had such experience here? Now that's how to do it. That's how it begins. You've studied the word. You've closed the word. You're going out to your office. And as you're driving, the word you study, you're hearing them in your ears. It's coming back to you. Coming back to you. That's how to do it. Did you understand that? If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, then train your mind to pick spiritual perceptions. To pick spiritual perceptions. Train your mind to pick spiritual perceptions. You can design things. Have a moment every day. Have a moment every day when you are sober. Did you hear my counsel? It could be for five minutes. It could be for ten minutes. But have a moment when you are yourself. Who wants to see what I just said now? You will never see the real you until you are sober minded. Have a moment. You think through some things. Have a moment. You are sober to do a little reflection on yourself every day. It could be for five minutes. It could be for ten minutes. Is that okay? But make sure it goes consistently. Through that, you, your ears will start hearing what God is saying to you. I don't know if you have been in a very sober mood before and you are in that sober mood and you hear a thought comes to you. Does that to anybody? Yes. You hear a thought comes to you. That's how it works. God wants to talk to you about your husband, about your wife, about your children, about your job, about everything. That's why it is not good for you to put yourself in a continual pressure of endless schedule. Take a break. Are you hearing me? Once your schedule is, you are jumping from market to office, from office to this, from that, to the car, from the car to traffic, from the traffic to where again? And you get home, jump into the kitchen if you're a lady for example or you're a man and you have to cook and then cook you are done cooking you eat you're done eating you just sit down and you feel tired who knows what i'm talking about here you know what i'm talking about who again knows what i'm talking about here you feel tired and when you sit down you begin to doze from that point does that happen to anybody and then you forget you have actually slept. I don't know if you forget you slept. You just realize why you are sleeping that I'm sleeping. That is not a style that can hear what God is saying. Have a sober mind, a sober moment every day. What kind of a moment do you have every day? Five minutes, ten minutes. You're sober. You're shut down from everything. That is possible for everybody. No matter the nature of your work. Is that right? Everyone can take a 10 minute break. Is that possible? A 15 minute break. Don't sleep. Just sit down. Don't check your phone. Just sit down and be quiet. That's all. At that moment... God will come to you. He will open your eyes. He will give you instructions. He will tell you what, where to go, where not to go. 
He'll give you clear instructions. We trust that you've been blessed by this message preached by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated, Oloruru Ojo Ibadan. Or watch our services online via the Men of Isaka Vision Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can also listen to us on MIVradio.com. For inquiries, please call 0808-085-4818 or send an email to mivmandate2010 at gmail.com. God bless you.